Okay, let's talk about creating dirt maps and how to do this for 3ds Max. Um, you use dirt max maps for various purposes, obviously. Uh, you use them for aging metals, aging other materials, and for changing the glossiness of various metals and random various random elements you want to add. So you're going to be needing dirt maps a lot, and it's a good idea to know how to create them so you can create the ones which which you need. So the easiest way to do this is if you just go and Google and just look for something, or you can take a, a photo, go outside and take some photos, you know, you know, take photos of old, old concrete or something like this. But uh, if you just Google concrete, you can look at images. And the best idea here is go tools and size, and then look for one about the size you want. So, you know, even that's good. But these other ones are good. You don't have to go that high. You know, you can go, you know, this is always good enough. That's a massive image. That's a large image. That's a good one. Um, you can just, you know, if it if it doesn't show you the actual image, it's showing a thumbnail here, then you can click on visit. Otherwise, you can come here and, you know, sometimes it'll show you the actual image here. So you can take that and just get this and just drag and drop that. Let's put that in maps. And this other one here, still loading. Let's take a look at this. Okay. And you can open this. Just right click on it, open with Photoshop. And then, you know, you could use that directly, but normally you're going to want to go something more like this. You're going to want to make the brights brighter and the darks darker. And like that. And then you can save that out as a JPEG and you have your dirt map. You know, it depends what you're trying to do with it, but typically you'll do something like that. And you might make it grayscale, that's kind of normal. Um, you can just click here on black and white. And save that out. Uh, but sometimes you want to add in extra elements, so you'll often then be looking at other things. And let's take a look at... Um, dirt. You know, you might find something like this, and you get, really like that texture, and you want to add that in there. So, you're going to take that and drag that over. And you can just drag this in here into Photoshop. And just, it should snap up there. If it doesn't, you can come over here and turn on snap. And snap to, and it will tell you what it wants to snap to. But that should be good. And then you can just come down, take this, and drag this out to those corners. Now, because of the way I've pulled this in, it's saved it as a smart object. It's done that. So, you can use that, or you can, you know, you can rasterize it. You can click here and... Um, rasterize layer and that then it's no longer a smart object but that's up to you if you want to do that or not and then if we change this from normal to multiply and we can always take the black and white put it above and then we're gonna add another curves on here and if I press Control or G that links it to that layer so it only affects this one layer uh, if I press same again it'll unlink it the other way of doing it if you go alt and you just Scroll, come over here, just between the layers you can then click, and that will link it as well directly. There's other ways as, as well, but those are the two normal ways I use, and then, you know, you can make this lighter. And if you want, you know, if you go, oh, that's too dark, you can bring up the lightness. You know, bring up the darkness, sorry, make it less dark. And you can decide what you want, you know, maybe you want something like this. And you can see, you know, the effect of that layer on top. And multiply here just means it's only bringing in the darks and it's ignoring the lights. Yeah, so you'll notice you have these different layers and you can play around with these and you see you've got these lines. So basically, these are your, your kind of normal, you know, you've got normal and you've got dissolve, which just makes it look a bit odd. Um, but it's obviously useful. I, I've never used it, but it does have its uses. These ones here just bring in the darks. That's what this line here separates. These are just to do with making it darker in various ways. And you can go through and see how that does it. But they have different ways of doing similar things. This here is just lighter. So you come in and it just lightens it and it just deals with the lights. It ignores the darkness in the image. So it just takes those light ones. And this here does both. 
So this group here goes, okay, we're going to bring in lights and darks, lights and darks, and it just brings those in there. And then these do different things. We can go into that. But that's the purpose of these these three here. This is darks, this is lights, and this is lights and darks being brought in. So if you want lights and darks, you come in and you play around with these. And, you know, hard light is doing a pretty good job with both the lights and the darks coming in and with this map. And, you know, if you bring in another dirt map, um, you know, maybe something like this. They don't always load these ones when you're trying to visit them. You know, maybe the link isn't quite there, isn't quite actually really what it says it is. Well, you can bring that in. And just bring this up here. Okay, that's magically exactly the right size. And can, then what we want is let's make this one black and white. Again, click on the black and white. Control Alt G just to attach it to that layer. Let's bring a curves in. Control Alt G. You can also use levels if you want or exposure to do this. And I'm just going to select all three of these and press Control E to collapse them together. And then Control A, which selects the whole thing. You see a dotted line around it, and Control C copies it. And then I'm going to come here, click down here to make a layer, a mask on this. Press Alt and click on the mask, so I'm in there. Press Control and V to paste that one in, and that masks it out. You see, so now what you end up with is that. So if I disable this layer mask and enable it, so you can see you can affect the dirt map by adding in masks. You know, because this you're like, well, that's too harsh. So this then just masks out. All these black areas are masked out and the white areas stay. So that's what it's done. And that's given you a pretty nice dirt map which you can work with. Um, and that's really the workflow. That's how you create dirt maps inside, you know, for use in your 3D programs. And if you like, you can come along here and you've got the density of, of this uh, mask. So you can bring down this density if you like. And, play around with it, see what you like, you know, maybe you go, oh, actually, I want something like this, or, it's entirely up to you, um, and you can also come here, and you can also take this, and you can just, you know, blur it, it says feather, it means blur, really, you can blur that if you like, but basically, that's all you're doing when you're creating dirt maps, is you're just blending together various bitmaps, and then saving them out. Um, and we'll do another one quickly here, just so you can see another idea, another workflow. Um, instead of starting with concrete, it's another good example. Let's go old plaster. Yeah, this is great. Look at that. That's awesome. And then you can open it. And just drag that in there. And then right-click, open with Adobe Photoshop. And then again, we're going to make this black and white. And uh, instead of using curves, let's use an exposure this time. And we're just going to make it brighter. And this one here, if we bring this, this will increase the contrast, see? And this will change the middle point there. So you can do something like that. Uh, and then, you know, it's very obvious what that is. So let's find something else we can add on top. Uh, maybe we can add actually just another plaster one. Maybe that can go straight on top. And again, I'm just going to move that black and white. Oh, you've got to click yes on this to apply it. Let's move that black and white above here. And change this to... We can try multiply this time. You can see the difference. And let's put another exposure, control G to attach that. I really use curves a lot. I'm just trying to show you different ways of doing the si a similar thing here. So that looks kind of nice. You see the extra detail being brought in here. 
Um, and then let's take one more and just put it on top. Take a third pasta, why not? It's not loading it. Again, I could visit, if I visit the website, I bet it will see free download. And so I'm not interested in logging in right now. But you can sign in, log in, and you can download these if you like. Something like that. Oh, another good one is is like old paper. Yeah, you can take something like this. And often these will just work on their own. Okay, maybe not from these websites. And a lot of people Especially uh, in certain websites, a lot of people will put up, you know, old paper textures for you to use. And it'll be like, free to use, please use my texture. So this is pretty nice. Uh, and we'll just use this one. And I'm just going to show you here, I'm just going to open this with, with Photoshop. And I'm going to press Control T. And then I can move this out beyond here. And move this one down beyond there. And then again, I'm just going to make this black and white. And let's use here yeah, levels. <laughs> I'm not trying to confuse you. I'm just showing you different ways of doing the same thing. That's my purpose anyway. If I'm failing and if I'm confusing you, please let me know and I'll, I'll try and keep it simple. But, you know, you can use that directly as a dirt map there um, if you like. And that's like one of the nice things with old paper textures is you can just do that. But here we've got this. Let's go control T. And we're just going to put the curves on there, control or G. That's what I normally do. To make it brighter, that takes the brighters, you know, the things which are this bright, makes them brighter. And it's a curve, so it follows this. So the darks here are brighter, but the blacks stay black. And then I can bring down the darks by doing that. And I actually want it more bright than that. Yeah, it's something more like that. And then we're going to take this and just set this on. We'll try these. Normally, multiply works well. And you can go through these and see which one you like and how you like it affecting it. We're going to again try these ones here, which do both. It's going to have to be overlay or soft light. I think we can go with overlay. And that gives you your dirt map and you can save that out. Now, the only problem with these is that they are not seamless. You see, they, they're going to tile here. So normally, you can fix each one of these individually on the way, but normally I'll get here and then I'll, I'll make a duplicate of it. So I press Shift, Control, Alt, and E. And that makes a duplicate here, which you can then use. And then I will take this and go Filter, Other, Offset, and just move it to the right, and maybe a thousand, yeah, maybe fifteen hundred. And guys joke in the office all the time <laughs> because I tend to use a spot healing brush, which is J is a shortcut to get to it. So I would say, oh yeah, just press J that handles everything, and then I just make it however dense I want it to make, want to make it. And this doesn't always work, and you have to be aware here. You've got these three choices: content aware, create texture, and proximity match. And normally what I'll be using is one of these two. So if one doesn't work, I'll use the other one and see if that works. And if it doesn't work, i use the stamp tool. So you just come in here and brush over this. And that sort of blends it together there, you see? And it's no longer, you know, now it's seamless. Well, seamless there. Then you go filter, other, offset. At which point I'll move it back, minus 1500. And then I'll come down. So let's come down 1000. Let's come down 1400. And then click OK, and then just brush over the middle bit here. Now you have to be careful when doing it, because these edges which I hit now, it won't be calculating those properly, so they'll still be a bit of a mess. The reason I did this along here is, see, it looks kind of like a line along there, so I just wanted to break that up a bit by doing that. And that was a duplicate of that, which is a duplicate of that, so I don't really want three th things of the same all in a row that looks, looks silly. 
Okay, so let me come back here. Filter, other, offset. Let's get rid of that 1500. Go minus 1400. Okay, and then we're just gonna... This is back to the original, right? This is now back in the original place it was before I offset it, you see? So the edges there have been edited, and we're gonna have to edit those a bit more. We're just gonna go offset again, and let's make that back to zero. And let's move this over a thousand. And you can see down here, it's just a bit of a mess. And that's because it can't calculate. You know, when you're clicking on the edge here, it can't calculate this edge over here to make sure it matches. So it just calculates its own edge, and that sometimes creates a bit of a problem. Which it did down here, but it didn't up here at all, you see? So we can go again, filter, other, offset, and we can push that back 1,000. And then we'll just check this again to coming down a thousand. And there's nothing down there. That's that's fine. So it's just that one area. And turn it on and off. And now you have a seamless dirt map, which you can use. Yeah, and this can be used in, you know, your 3D applications, whether they're Max or Blender or Maya. And you can also use them, you know, in Unity or Unreal Engine or whatever you like. So there's there's a lot of choice here. Uh, there's a lot of possibilities for using these maps, and they're really easy to use. And I really suggest you just start creating your own and, and start putting them in scenes.